Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the ICT String Seminar. So today we are happy to have Atak and Hilary Firat from MIT, who will be talking to us about bootstrapping closed string field theory. So over to you, Atak. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. So I'm going to talk about my recent paper on the subject of closed string field theory. So my main focus on uh, CSFT uh, and the bootstrapping are is going to come from like come naturally in certain parameterization. So, but, but before I do that, I'd like to give an overview of like what why we do SFT, like what's the reasoning behind it. So, the string field theory is supposed to give a non-perturbative definition for string theory. So, and the, like it's it's provide a second quantized formalism. So, anything that we do in quantum field theory for usual particle physics, we, should, we are supposed to do it for the for the string theory. And the, like this test, for example, we should be able to do mass renormalization, vacuum shifts, that's, uh, that's one thing that we can do, um, which we also like do with the, like there are very recent works on this. We can use the established consistency, you know, unitarity, crossing, CPT in, in future probably. We can do these sort of things. Um, Another thing is that the background independence, uh, there, there were some works in the past that, that we used to understand how the background independence work in string field theory, even though we don't have a manifest background independence formulation. And lastly, I mean, which is which I think that the most like missing aspect of this uh, formalism is that we, we are supposed to explore classical solutions to string theory. So we, we, we have a, like some action and we, we, we should be able to find its uh, critical points. So far, this this hasn't been done in closed string theory. And like, there is a good reason that why, why we couldn't do this. So my main result is basically like a setting up a foundation for this uh, approach. Uh, okay. So my main result is the following. Um, I'm going to show, well, argue at least the hyperbolic closed string field theory, which I will explain what this means, is a particular uh, uh, parameterization of a closed string field theory. This, the, this theory's data can be, is actually encoded in the Lewell theory, semi-classical Lewell theory. So this is going to be my main results and I'm, I'm going to explain what, what its con consequences are entail. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions during when you talk, please feel free, feel free to ask because I, I want to like give a general overview and take it slow. So okay, let me begin. So this is going to be the main results, and uh, yeah, I basically run some tests and like argue from general principles why it should be true, uh, and like hopefully you know we we can use it to understand better what these uh, solutions will look like in future. So let me tell you what what string field theory is. Uh, according to my understanding. So in usual string theory, we start with a uh, Riemann surfaces, which are, you know, uh, it's, it's one dimensional uh, compact manifold, complex compact manifold. And when we compute amplitudes, what we do is that, uh, okay, we compute on shell string amplitudes. So, and it, basically we take this Riemann surfaces and modulate spaces and use some 2D CFD matter plus ghosts to compute on shell string amplitudes by inserting 0, 0,0 uh, primaries. So this is fine. And uh, because, you know, like when you do a conformal transformation that uh, those vertex operators don't change, but the, like for a field theory, we should have off shell string amplitudes. And we should have it in a way that the, when we consider on shell states, that is 0, 0,0 primaries, we should uh, reduce the on shell and also it's supposed to like a satisfy certain properties. So what we do here is that we consider Riemann surfaces again, but we endow it plus some extra structure. I'm going to talk about what this extra structure means in a moment. So basically we are kind of extending the notion we have, geometric notion we have. And again, we use a 2D CFT to compute this. And we get the off-shell string amplitudes. 
And from this, we construct the field too. So this is the basic picture, like how we proceed. Basically we are reverse engineering our theory by like a, uh, first creating offshore amplitudes and then basically use it to construct the action that will give those amplitudes. So this extra structure is so-called local coordinates around the punctures. So basically, and it kind of makes sense, right? Because as I was saying, there's zero comma zero vertex operators. And when you do a conformal transformation, it doesn't matter which patch that you choose around the puncture to um, describe it. But for offshell states, this is going to be important. So these are basically, you know, you'll take the unit disk, for example, this one, and you have a Riemann surface. And there are like this data about the map that how you how you map this uh, unit disk to the surface itself. So you put your vertex operator here, and this F1 basically tells you how you should insert it on the surface. Of course, there are certain uh, uh, certain uh, conditions on this. For example, like you want to describe Feynman diagrams, uh, right? So what you want to do is that the sum surfaces you you are supposed to describe by like having a flat cylinder in the middle. So these are Feynman diagrams. So some surfaces, like ideally you want all surfaces to describe by some cubic vertex with Feynman, uh, some uh, flat propagators, but it turns out that that's impossible for closed string theory. That you have, like what you have to do is that the, you start with a cube, some sort of a cubic vertex, you construct these, uh, Feynman diagrams by this geometric identification, then there are like a surfaces remain. Like for example, you construct a, like a four point interaction with some cubic vertex, then you will see that there are like a part of the moduli space that is not covered by this construction. So those are going to be the so-called string vertices. Those are the elementary inter string interactions, which I'm going to denote by curly V. So it's going to be, you know, some formal sum that is, you know, I'm going to sum over the punctures, I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, genus and punctures, also a negative Euler number. So GN, H bar G, kappa. So, so this, the, these are like essentially some, uh, you know, the set of Riemann surfaces plus the coordinates that describing it, H bar and kappa is the sum formal constant. So these are basically Riemann set of Riemann sums uh, surfaces plus the local coordinates. And important property is that the, they, are kind, they are far from degeneration. So they don't include, you know, uh, the one that the punctures are getting close to each other or like a genus getting noted, something like this. So basically this is the main idea. Uh, basically we are trying to like, a, use Feynman diagrams as much as possible, but like we cannot do it. So we, we have to use it like a remaining surfaces as, as, our, as our vertices. So here's a pictorial understanding of what I told you. So this is the moduli space of the, the, the Riemann surfaces. And the, the, the other one, this one is the local coordinates, well, up to a phase, but you know, it's, it's some sort of a bundle over the uh, usual moduli space. And this choices of uh, V is that the like some uh, section or chain on this space. And uh, like, these are going to be the Feynman diagrams. Uh, and these are going to be the elementary vertices. So far so good, like any questions? Okay, so this is fine and good, but th there should be some condition on this choice of V. It, the, not every choice will work um, because we have to like a cover each surface once. And so this, it can be shown that the, like you have to satisfy the geometric Battle and Mikovsky equation or geometric master equation that is the, have the following form. So it's like a, it's it's a it's a equa it's a homological equation. It's a equation on the this 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 of this chains. So the uh, this partial v is essentially the boundary that I already indicated here. That that happens in the the this bundle, 
And there are two operations. There's the bracket and there's a Laplacian. So at the surface level, these are some uh, sets on the module on this like a uh, bundle. So for example, if you take a two Riemann surface and identify their local coordinates like this with a zero length propagator and consider all the surfaces that you construct out of it, this is, ba this is basically what defines the, this uh, bracket operation. And uh, similarly, you consider the, the this delta sigma is that the value consider when you have the local coordinates on the same surface. So basically, these are the like the ones that you can construct with this, uh, all the surfaces that you can construct uh, with this type of identification. And like the BV equation tells you that uh, this thing should match with uh, your stresses um, boundary. But remember, there are some uh, factors, right? For example, let me do the first two. So for example, you have this because the V is like a, some form of sum over this H bar and K. So you find this basically this tells you this is just a point. The second one is going to be something like this. Um, V03, V03, like this. For example, basically, for example, this tells you that the ones you consider for you know quartic interaction, its boundary should match up with what's coming from the identifying uh, uh, three three point vertices. Okay, so this is BV equation, and this is something that one has to satisfy. And the reason is that the once you satisfy this, um, you can write an action and you can quantize it. Uh, so what's happening is that you can write the following action uh, where one over half psi QB psi plus 2G N K minus 2N or N factorial with some interactions G. And these interactions are given by the, the ones that you integrate over this vertex region. So the sigma it denotes the local coordinates. There's some ghost insertion. They are not that important here. Ghost, um, oops, ghost insertions. And the states themselves getting inserted. So then you can show that the, like once you take the uh, your background is some 2D CFD and take the state side to be the, some element of that uh, Hilbert space of that CFD. You can show that this, this once you wrote this action, uh, which are the kinetic terms basically given by the BRST operator of that 2D CFD, and the interactions are given by the, this, uh, what, you, what you integrate over these string vertices, you can show this can be quantized in the BV sense. So. This is a well-defined procedure. As I draw in the diagram, you get the Riemann surfaces with the local coordinates, use 2D CFT, and you write it like a well-defined action. Offshell amplitude and well-defined action. So in a sense, here is the, like a general picture. Like I said, there's a Riemann surfaces, local coordinates. You push those structures to the gauge invariance SFT. So in a sense, you can call it BV morphism, but you know you don't have to. So the goal of this talk is to understand this, you know, what, what are these? So of course we can answer a lot of questions by just looking at the structure themselves, right? We have a, we have a, this algebraic structure going on and the, like we can understand its consequences, but this is like, I, I compare it like a doing group theory versus doing like a, looking at the particular group. So, you know, you can do group theory with abstract level through a bunch of theorems like Sewell's them or whatever. But at the end of the day, you want to like uh, look at the one particular group that you're interested in, like SU2 or the hetero group, whatever you want to do. So in a sense, it's similar. You know, we can talk a lot about string field theory as a structured, you know, as its own algebraic structure. But at the end of the day, we want to understand the one particular parameterization that can be useful for, like for example, classical solutions. So the goal of this talk is that the understanding one of them. Uh, which are going to be the hyperbolic parameterization. So outline of my talk is like roughly follows. So I'm going to talk about my, the hyperbolic vertices that is satisfying this geometric BVA equation and gives local coordinates. 
Then I'm going to talk about the local coordinates of this and how to construct it. So at this point, you already like, we already going to see that there is some relation with the legal theory. And I'm going to talk about some simplifying cases like WKB approximation that is going to be further simplify this structure of hyperverse vertices and it's going to be related to struggle differentials that that closed string field theory canonically used in the past. And after I said that, I'm going to describe my bootstrap formalism uh, to solve these structure and like how to construct, for example, you the four vertex four vertex is ge geometric data from the cubic vertex. So roughly this is what I'm going to talk about. Are there any questions? Okay, since not, I think I am clear enough or not. But anyway. Okay, so like I said, let me talk about hyperbolic string vertices. So in the past, like this uh, geometric problem were considered with the minimal area. So if you know what that is, that's a, like you can construct, like you take the sum surface, you consider like a non-zero systole, like which I'm going to explain, but then you constrain this surfaces, but that has still is have many problems in terms of like existence, exp, you know, how to make it explicit. But recently by Costello and Sweba, there was this uh, proposition that using uh, hyperbolic vertices uh, and that shown to be exactly solving the, um, the, the BV equation. So um, the, also it goes back like Musavin Pius tried to use a cusp vertices but they didn't solve explicitly uh, exactly the BV equation. So th this, this is the construction that I'm going to talk about. So here's, here's this. So what you do is that you take a Riemann surface with borders length L, same length and geodesic borders. So un by uniformization theorem, it is known that this, this endo is a hyperbolic metric that is you know, negative constant curvature, which I said to be minus one. And then you consider local coordinates by putting these cylinders. So for, like what you do is that the following, there's a recipe. So you first define the following set. These are the set of all Riemann surfaces that has like uh, n borders with length L that has systole greater than some big L, you know, the L that the, bond, the boundary is length. So systole here means that you can consider all shortest, uh, you consider a simple closed geodesic of the surface like this. And systole is the number that is shortest. So, you know, like if you consider a torus, one puncture torus say, and the, like if the like a neck gets wider, you see like at some point it's going to degenerate. So you're basically saying that the, it can't be smaller than the border itself. So that's what systole is. Then you construct your string vertices uh, by this grafting operation. So this is called grafting. You know, if you know gardening, you know the grafting is that the where you take a tree and put another branch. So that's that's the origin of the term. So it is called grafting infinite with prime is a notation, but basically you take the set in this this moduli space and instead write it over the uh, the usual moduli space like so. So this is quite natural because once you put this flat cylinder part, which is like a k equals zero. Conformally, this provides the, some local coordinates on the surface. So, and then you can show this solves the geometric BV. For quantum level, you have to put certain condition on this, the length of the boundaries, arc uh, cinch, was one, which is something like 1.6, I don't remember. So basically you have to put this like a, the length shouldn't get large. And the for classical BV, that is you ignore the slap Laplacian term, you can just say it can be anything. It will solve the BV anyway. So the, for, for example, like if you know what stubs are, or at least heard of it, 
you see like the in minimal area, there was additional stuff that like when you serve the, 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 the surface to each themselves, it prevented the creating shortest curves when you, you know, you basically identify like this. Um, so some surface. But the, the, the good thing about hyperbolic vertices is that it already comes with its own stops in a sense that there's something called Fuller Lemma that says that the, once you consider uh, these surfaces, there is certain lengths, certain like a, there's say S, there are certain regions of the like a surface itself that, uh, that this part is isomorphic to some hyperbolic cylinder and they are disjoint. That, that's a color lemma. So basically when you put this condition, the S is large enough that when you sew it together, it, it keeps, uh, it, it won't create the shortest curve. So, you know, you can call it hyperbolic stops if you will. So that's the idea of these vertices. Uh, the construction is basically taking a border treatment surface, grafting flat cylinders and defining the, defining the resulting uh, string vertices. So are there any questions at this point? Uh, yeah, just uh, one uh, clarification. So you can think of this as a choice of gauge on the world sheet uh, that you are imposing together with the additional uh, uh, local coordinates coming from the cylinders. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm supposed, usually you don't have this, this uh, uh, discontinuity in the curvature. Uh, so how am I supposed to think of that? Um, so I the way I think about it is that this choice of string vertices is going to be a field parameterization for the string field theory eventually. So in the, as long as the version, like as long as the on shell amplitudes are concerned, you know, this is irrelevant, right? I have a metric. So this is called Thurston metric, but I have this metric, but it's, it's going to drop off from, from any computation on shell. The point is that at off-shell, we really do care about the, the, the local coordinates themselves. Again, the metrics from the worksheet point of view drops out as well, but the local coordinates do not. So this is like, it's just a tool to generate that local coordinate data so that it will be a doing basically field parameterization of the, uh, the, the resulting string field theory. Uh, so is that clear? Even though like a metric is like a discontinuous, it is not really a problem because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, there won't be anything at the junction which you have to worry about. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, actually, no, because the junction themselves, of, of course, second derivative jumps, right? It goes yeah. from zero kilometer to minus one. So you might vary. Does it really affect it? But like as far you know, like the way you should really thinking about it as follows. So basically, this this part is a conformal to some puncture disk, right? Yes. And what you are inserting is some vertex operator, say a psi. So basically, what you do is that you are doing some path integral over this disk or like this cylinder. You are basically taking a cylinder. So yeah. basically what the job of this to, does is that you define some state here, mm -hmm. uh, a certain part, particular way, then you let the, high, the, the, the rest of the hyperbolic part to interact, like a defined interaction between those states. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that problem, it's like a providing the, like a, the, the boundary conditions to the interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, off shell that matters, right? Because on shell, you know, whatever you put it, it's the same, but the on shell, the off shell is definitely important to consider. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay. Yeah, can I just ask, ask a related question perhaps? Mm -hmm. That So what this is saying is that if you have a finite L0 state, which involves, so whose uh, amplitude will only involve a finite number of derivatives of the local coordinates, you are probably okay, right? Because there is no non-analyticity of the derivatives of the local coordinates at the function. Uh, I think that's correct, yes. But if you have really infinite number of derivatives, right? Suppose you have, you really want a non-local uh, external string field, could it still affect 
this this continuity uh, so, so yeah when you consider l you consider as a plus right um, yeah, yeah, yeah as a plus and you are saying that uh, if the the vertex operator contains are uh, like an arbitrary high level would it affect it is that right, yeah. the question um, so i mean you can say the same thing for the minimal area i mean minimal yeah, area there is this yeah there is this definite there is a jump in the minimal area as well it doesn't go continuously yeah. so because yeah minimal area what happens is that there's barton's paper in uh, 2000 18, I guess, it's like uh, you had this flat part that is coming from minimal area, but then it becomes positively curvature. And as far as I remember, when that transition happened, it wasn't, uh, its first derivative is continuous, but its second derivative is not, again, oh. like, like this. So I don't think that will be an issue uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, like metric on the worksheet is irrelevant for anything. The local coordinates is what really we care. And it's just a tool to generate those. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions before I do the construction of local, how to do the, the local coordinates for these? Okay. So the, the, you can construct local coordinates. So that's my first favorite actually, which is, no, you know, it's like three years ago. But again, so first of all, like how would you do it? Like the way you will approach it is that, okay, you know, like I, metrics is very important here. So I have to solve for metric on these surfaces. And uh, basically then you say, okay, I have to solve the labels equation. This one, basically saying the k equals minus one with certain boundary condition that determines those geodesic orders. But you know, this is a PD and it's a quite hard thing to do. So instead what you do is that you relate to Fuchsian equation. That is you define this ODE. So this is a trick that is old as the Poincare and Klein and all these people, which is a very well known trick, but uh, um, like not in physics, I guess. So basically you define this, uh, Fuchsian equation with the, this uh, T of uh, T of what phi Z defined as the, this thing. You already see like there's, there might be some level theory going on because this is the stress energy tensor of level theory, essentially. So basically you consider uh, this equation. And one good thing is that the E to the minus phi over two is a solution. Basically, you know, you uh, this tells you that the, like uh, you can use this equation appropriately. Like if you know the, the how this thing depends on z, you can use to construct the metric. So, but it's very involved. Uh, there's multiple steps rather. So first of all, you can construct the metric that I was considering that is one with the borders by taking this t of uh, var phi z. As, as the following form. So I'm going to keep the borders the same length, but you don't have to. And put I will put the punctures at Xi I, uh, here. Ci. So, okay, this is the form that you have to take. And this deltas are defined by one over two, one over two lambda square. Where lambda is, you know, L over two pi, basically radius of those things. So, okay. Why? So here, here's the reason. So we have like a first order poles, uh, second order poles and first order poles. So first of all, let's argue for this presence of second order poles. So if you, you once you have a double pole in your um, T here, what you can show that the metric itself, when you are sufficiently close to the puncture, um, that it takes the following form. So you have some hyperbolic, part that it connects to the surface, but as it gets close, you add like another hyperbolic cylinder, it, it diverges, then the very diverge, you add another hyperbolic cylinder and keeps going on and on. So there are some singularities in this metric, like when you just consider the double poles. So then you want to say, okay, I want to add double poles to each um, uh, puncture. So you, oh, by the way, this is already like a struggle story, but I will come to that. So. You already add it, and that like what you have to do is that globally, I have to add these additional first order pole because those are the most 
general terms allowed. You, you say, because regular terms, if you allow, allow regular terms, you will find higher order poles which you don't want to. So this is the most, you can argue that this is the most general form of the T. And the CIs, the residues of the first order poles, are so-called accessory parameters. And you have to determine them somehow so that the, the solutions of these equation, the Fuchsian equation, is going to be uh, the, the one that the metric that you want to describe. So the question is that, the, again, how, how do you find this? So if the, the way you can find it, so the, you, you see like the I argued for double pole say that, okay, this, this kind of gives local information for the right metric. Now we are asking the global information. So it turns out this can be found by asking the following problem on the, the Fuchsian equation. That is used, take the solutions, say it's psi plus psi minus, it's wrong scheme one, you know, I normalize it. And if you are, go around the punctures, like so, you know, if you rotate around it, you want to change this with M. So in general differential equations, this M is an element of PSL2C, but here you will demand this element of PSL2R. And in fact, you want to demand this to be hyperbolic element. That is, it's traced to be greater than two. So why, you do, why do you do that? So if you do this, you will see that the metric that this, uh, you know, e to, the minus, e to the minus of r phi over two is going to be single value. So that, that's the reason, you know, like if, you, if it is a real mono, this is called monogramy, by the way. Uh, if it is greater, if it is greater than this, you know, if you satisfy these conditions, you can see like if you go around the punctures that will define a single valid metric and it will happen for every puncture so that it is going to define the metric that you want with this, like this additional hyperbolic uh, things that is attached to its border. But once you have that, what you can do is that uh, cut this off, right? Just, you know, cut it from this geodes again, eliminate those and just graph the cylinder. And the, the way you do it is basically, then it, it defines a local coordinate. This is as follows. So basically you take the ratio of two solutions. So you can ask, why do I do this? But I skip some steps here because um, also like with the choice of M diagonal. I skip some step, but the, like the reason that you do it is that the, in this parameterization, the metric takes a particular form, like basically it takes, you wrote, write the hyperbolic metric on the uh, radial quantizations, if you will. And this ratio, this, this thing right there is basically determining the, uh, like the conformal map that you have to do to that uh, part. So basically you eliminate this singular part and just put a flat part. And there's this NI that is basically the mapping radius of this uh, maps, like how, uh, show how, how much you should expand the unit disk so that it matches which is the geodesic. So these are determined by the hyperbolic monogramy. That is the M. Well, M and the, like how it, uh, basically how, how you have to, like you have to choose a particular set of solution to your ODE so that uh, like it's, it has a, a hyperbolic monogramy. So, okay. Uh, so this is the general construction of the yeah. local core. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So in this, Paper by Farooq and Roji, they, they also gave a construction of the local, local coordinates, right? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't hear you. Yeah, the, the local coordinate that Musafir and Fust constructed. Yes. Does it agree with this construction in the small L limit? Uh, yeah, I mean, it does. I, I checked that and... Uh, it does, but the, the Musavian and Perez's construction has this like a problem that they were considering cusps, right? And they were cutting off the cusp and the, like combine those. But once you do that, they're actually not like a continuous, right? Like in geodesic borders. So what, we're, what they were doing is that they were correcting those cusps. Yeah. So what I did is that I checked at the first level when I, this L goes to zero, 
indeed it it matches with their construction but it's the subleading orders i haven't checked it's because it involves some eisenstein series and all that which i didn't want to do but anyway at the leading order yeah it does match yeah, order, i guess at the subleading order we don't expect them to match right because it's really yeah, important. yeah I, mean, I mean you actually you do expect the match because what they're doing is that uh, they are writing some series in l and since there is like a no matching they are correcting it so that it becomes like the singularity is pushed to the the L square order. So at the L, L order, it better match, but I haven't checked that. But probably it will, it will because there is this Klein lambda function are coming in and it has a this Eisenstein series expansion. So, but yeah, like it's not a, uh, it was not a really important at the time I thought. But anyway, like it's the answer to your question. Yeah, it does match at the small L. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. So, okay. Um, okay, let me tell you how to find CI and NI as a function of Xi I and Xi I bar. You know, basically you want to find these as like a function of moduli. Uh, so the N equals three is that like, you look at this equation, take N equals three and you can, well, if you if you've studied OD or like seen it at a time ago, you see that the hypergeometric equation Right, it's a three singular, three regular singularities, and basically you can use this hypergeometric uh, functions and it's how they relate at different bases to solve for local coordinates. Expression is not nice, but you can do it. So in n equals four, it's a different story because now you have a this. Actually, in n equals three, there's an additional constraint. There's three constraints that CIs have to satisfy, right? because you see, like when you put the punctures at the finite point. You want to say that the infinity, there is no monodromy, and the monodromy is trivial. So that puts three conditions, and n equals three, that conditions are can be solved, and you can, you, you know, CIs are not, you know, there are no non trivial CIs. And then NIs are formed by uh, this connection formals, like I said. So n greater than four uh, is a different story. Like I said, it's like there is a non trivial CI that you have to solve, that you have to find the connection formulas. There's a really hard problem, and you know it's not. It's still open. You know, there's called Haynes equation apparently. But what one, you know, like once you encounter a differential equations like this, what you can do is that to pull off a double KB, and I mean, that's what I did. Like basically, I said, okay, I'm going to take this uh, length of the geodesic to infinity, and because it, it, you know you see that once you look at this equation, there was a delta, there was a lambda, and you know when you make it large. You, you you become you you find yourself in the double kb regime so previously barton and kevin costello has argued that this is supposed to be minimal area i mean it's it's you can just argue from the gauss point you can say if these are going to increase this part should sh shrink by gauss point so you only end up with the flat cylinders and in fact you end up with a, something called travel quadratic differential um, which is the central thing for minimal area at the uh, genus zero, uh, but a differential. So basically, you know, these borders approach each other and they, they touch in a way that uh, um, the 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 Strabble differentials um, critical graph does touch. So I should plug, you know, say like we saw with Harold Urban that the n equals four with the machine learning. You know, it's because uh, why not? It is a nice paper because it, it inspired this paper at least. So you know, basically I'm relating these two theories. I have the theory with the hyper this so-called Thurston matrix, and it's I'm showing that a WKB limit of that matrix is basically Strabble differential that can be described by Strabble differential. So how come? So it's usual the WKB story. You take the solutions of your um, differential equation as you know, do some answers like this. Uh, sorry, See. if I can. Sure. Uh, uh, so how, how would the WKB help you for your ultimate goal? I, I, uh, I mean, yes, you can do WKB and I'm, uh, you'll be explaining that, but I just want to know how how is that? Uh, that's a particular limit as far as you're concerned, right? Uh, yeah. So you say, okay, you are already relating one hard problem with the another hard problem, right? So there are two simplification is going to happen. First, I will like you see here, 
the, the overall uh, coefficient is going to get simplified. You don't have to find monodromies anymore. That's going to be one simplification. And second simplification is going to be uh, like where the level theory is going to enter. So basically, the accessory parameter can be fixed by level theory. And when you take this WKB limit, that, that fixing is simplifies a great deal. So in that respect, that's going to uh, like simplify the problem uh, to my, you know, simplify the problem. And from the perspective of closed string field theory, the L I use for construct the solutions is not really relevant. You know, these are equivalent parameterizations. And mm -hmm. it appears that the uh, this infinity limit is that the most simplest one uh, that one can construct solutions. At least that's what we expect, because if you look at the, the tachyon potentials coefficient, these are the smallest. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a better chance of converging. So there are like multiple uh, reason that we do this. But the simplest so you're saying that the large L limit is uh, in some ways uh, even natural from the closed string yes. field yes. theory point yeah, of view. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, like both local coordinates and closed string field theory. Also, you can argue from open string field theory because you know you have Witten's theory, and uh, there's a, like a natural cubic vertex that is also coming from Strevel differential. And these are the closed string extension of those vertex. So if there's a chance to solve the theory. These should be the ones that are natural ones. It is uh, that's uh, right. Uh, but uh, this uh, this limit is useful at the tree level, right? Because at the quantum level, you had this bound uh, uh, on. Yeah, uh, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. That's uh, that's that's uh, that's an important thing to consider. Yeah, so far, like my uh, concern is just classical. I should specify. Classical. Okay, yeah. so it will be particularly useful in this limit. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like I want to solve classical first before I take the quantum one. Yeah, okay, good. Any other questions? Okay, so I am pulling off WKB, basically I'm making some answer. And you know, you say S and the, as usual, S is going to be related to square root of T and you're going to consider some limits. But at the end of the day, you know, all the dust is settled, you'll find that at the local coordinates, which is, you know, these are the, like, a, the Strebel differential takes its form, like, like this in local coordinates, because there is, a, like, a, just a cylinder, is equal to the following. A i squared, sorry, i squared plus some limit, then the goes infinity minus 2c hyperbolic, over lambda square and this. And there's also dz square. So AI, the alpha i's are defined like this, like the ones that are staying constant as lambda goes to infinity. And so you see like, these are the form that the, the, the local coordinates take in the, uh, the, the struggle, the, 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 the differential basically, we have this block of coordinates and you can compute that this combination right there becomes equal to this one in the, the Z plane that is on this sphere. And since the WI is touching away, they should describe struggle differentials and the struggle differentials form is the, the follows at the, at the Z surface. As I said, the, the VI and NIs are trivial now because the, the basic the monodromies becomes the length of these uh, like in this graph. And, but the important thing is that the um, important thing to realize is that the V related to uh, the, the accessory parameter in travel differentials, that is, you know, this ones to the hyperbolic, um, hyperbolic uh, uh, the accessory parameters, right? This is like a she, uh, CI travel is some particular limit of the hyperbolic ones. So I also, in my paper, I also argued that the CI hyperbolic increase with the lambda square. So this limit is fine, but there's a number. So, okay, I mean, so far so good. I related to hard problems and uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's fine, but uh, still it's hard, like, especially in struggle differential is solving some, you know, some, some very hard integrals usually. But uh, there's a really good thing about the CI hyperbolic that is, argued very long time ago by Polyakov and like 
the, you know, many other people, so-called polyeco conjecture. So I'm not going to get into the detail, uh, but let me write the, the conjecture. So there's the CI, the accessory parameters that was going to solve my monodromy equation, monodromy problem is given by the on shell level action. And I, when I take the derivative with respect to the position of function. So SL is on shell uh, regularized. Now you need to do some uh, boundary terms, level action. So those who don't know the, what the level action is, it's not really that important, but it's something like this plus, uh, and then regularization terms. So if you if you be careful about the regularization term, you can show this. And then I'm not going to go to the derivation how to do it. You can look at these uh, these people's papers that are really useful in this area. They are they're really good. Um, that uh, basically. What you do is that you start with the level theory. You consider uh, the conformal word identity in level theory and take the semi-classical limit. Then that naturally reduces to the Fuchsian equation that I was talking about. And then you say, okay, level theory should describe hyperbolic geometry at the uh, uh, semi-classical limit. And that's how you relate this and find this relation. So it's, it's a really nice story that you go quantum to solve some geometry problem and it has far reaching consequences. So, but you know, like, since I want to describe this easiest limit, which is the Schreble limit, uh, let me do the, uh, the, take the limit of this conjecture as well. So I had this, like I said. So How many is it necessary to you, for you to go quantum? I mean, can't you do it purely in the classical level theory? Uh, so, so the, argue the original argument is done in the like this heuristic patentical conformal word identity way so there there so there is then there there comes a proof by taxion and the, some other people uh, that prove that the, like indeed you know you can rigorously prove that conjecture is true uh, by you know defining level action just say classically without even referring to level theory or conformal word identities but the, like the case I'm considering is that the one with borders that hasn't been proven, but it only argued from the quantum level theory and taking the limit. I see. Okay. So you know, like it's amazing how people like because you know Klein and Poincaré and all these people try to, to prove uniformization theorem by showing the showing these parameters exist, but they haven't realized that this this connection hundred years ago or not realized like four years ago. So, okay, um, so this is how it relates. Then I can take the, uh, you know, this limit of this, you know, basically related to the, the, the CI hyperbolic to this. And it will come to the, taking the, some additional limit of the on shell level action, not the semi, on top of the semi classical limit. You take the semi classical and then take this uh, lambda goes to like very large limit. Uh, so you have heavy states, but now there's heavier states. And this is funny because then it reduces to something that is very familiar in the Shrevel quadratic differentials uh, uh, literature that it reduces to this S0, what I call S0 N star. So the S0 N star is the, the following thing. So it depends on the, the moduli and the length of the borders is given by the following combination of Ri, Hi. So, you know, I will, I call this modulus, it's a total modulus, but I call it total modulus for short. So this quantity right there is quite natural in the trouble differential um, uh, literature, but let me explain what these Ri's are first. These are so-called mapping radii. So, the, R, the RIs here is defined by the following. You just take the local coordinates first derivative and evaluate at the puncture itself. I'm sorry, WI. WI and you are later. Basically, it's like telling you this is how much you should scale your coordinates first. So, you know, the picture is this again, like 
basically tells you like what is the you know, what is the like size of this region in a rough sense. So this so this is this is this is a certain particular combination. So there are like a one uh, like a, the y, one understanding of this formula. So imagine you take the punctured Riemann surface and you consider non overlapping domains like random domains that is covering the Riemann surface, not the ones that are coming by travel differential. You can compute this quantity right there. Um, like it's a, just a, you know, like with this type of calculation. And you can rigorously prove that the like combination, like, like this functional that is defined over the like this non overlapping domains are maximized by the ones that are described by Strebel's differential. So that's a Strebel's uh, and Jenkins Strebel's famous theorem. And it made an appearance is, is like how it relates to uh, the, the accessory parameter itself. So that's the one inter intriguing connection. And in fact, like you can also prove this relation, although I didn't understand the proof, that rigorously by some, you know, like some very serious complex analysis. But you can argue this way, and we will see the advantage of doing this because it will connect to the bootstrap naturally. So this is very amazing fact that how these things are relating. But in the physics side, the relation is even more intriguing because recall the tachyon potential that is, you know, like the, the zero momentum fields, ta tachyon T and all other fields is given by like this. So there is a kinetic term and there's infinite interactions T and, and the T with the interaction of the rest of the fields. And the VN is proportional to this integral, modular integral I to n minus three, the, uh, uh, this one, and j1 and one over rj squared. So basically you insert, you do the ghost and you know you take care of this a bunch of c's with bunch of d's and the local coordinates gives you these factors. But realize the following, this one is essentially e to the minus two s zero n star according to this definition right there. It AI is equals to one, of course, for the closed string field theory. Mm -hmm. but, it's, it's, but this relates to my, uh, CI, right? By taking derivatives. So then you naturally led to the following fact that uh, if you consider bosonic closed string theory and you consider the integrant of the off-shell interaction of N zero momentum tachyons, that is this one, without, before you integrate. It generates the remaining coefficients of the, uh, the in, in closed string field theory. So once you know this, once you know how tachyons interact, like a given surface, then basically you are set to go. You can just, those are going to give a relation to the, the rest of the surface at each punctured level. So let me stop and uh, ask for a question because that's a, one of the very interesting claims about the closed string field theory. Okay, so like something like this happens in open theory as well, but there you just have this number four over three square root of three, and the rest of the numbers are basically determined by that. But here, like it's, there's a moduli dependence comes in, but the, that doesn't change the fact. You know, once you know these interactions, you know everything at each punctured level. Okay, so then the question becomes the following. Yeah, you know. Awesome. The, Mm -hmm. So when you talk about tachyon potential, you're not integrating out the heavy, heavy fields? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, because there's dots, right? I see. Okay. I mean, you can do it at this method. I will explain how to do it. Huh. Okay. So, okay. We, we reduce the, the complexity of string vertices to a, a function for each punctured level, at least for classical closed string filter. I mean, it also works in quantum, but let me talk about classical. So now the question is that how do I compute this thing? So it is a rich history. Again, complex analysis, people want to compute this in a long time. There are partial solutions in A equals four and equals five, but nothing concrete yet. But what I suggest is that you're using conformal bootstrap because again, this quantity is zero 
star it gets related it comes from level theory level theory is on shell action so once you hear that you say okay can i pull up a bootstrap so let me give you the what's the bootstrap is in case somebody that doesn't seen it before so you know you have basically four fields placed as zero one infinite and psi for example and this is basically proportional to the three point functions for h that you over the primaries with some special functions that are called conformal blocks and you integrate like this so you know like basically this is a partial wave expansion and you're saying that the Correlators are determined by three point function plus the conformal symmetry. And conformal symmetry always in there. And this is the three point functions. So, okay, the, how does this relate to string vertices? We need to, like, okay, the, the conformal boots, it's standard that we have the conformal, uh, this reversal blocks. I will mention it at, uh, just now, but let me. Uh, let me evaluate the S03 star to see you how, how it will relate. It will be a very useful exercise. So you can compute this by, you know, considering the hyperbolic tree vertex in my paper and taking the limit. So this is what you will find. It's a long thing to write, but uh, I think it will work the effort to uh, also tree square cross alpha one plus alpha two, uh, alpha three minus one over two alpha one. Let me use technology to simplify my life. So paste, paste. I am doing because I want to make it a dramatic. So, so there's going to be minus here. There's going to be minus here and there's going to be minus here and the same logic here, minus here, minus here and minus here. So, you know, okay, this is a long formula and you say, okay, this, this I mean, this is just a formula, but one thing that is really funny is that this is like a DOZZ formula. Uh, at least it looks like it. It's a three point function. You know, you remember you had this, Upsilons and a bunch of special functions, but the, the general uh, structure is something like this. You know, you have Upsilon two beta one, two beta two, these are this one, and you divide by this combination and there's some normalization that is not really important. I mean, in the hindsight, it's not really surprising because there's an on-shell level action and that should, you know, the, when you consider a DOZZ formula and uh, consider a semi-classical limit, it goes to the e to the minus Label action, and by taking a further limit, you reduce to this. So indeed, like this part is fine. Uh, then the second evidence is that the, when you consider Strebel differential, say in the quartic case, the critical graph usually looks like this, like the ones that we care about in post-string theory things. And there's a natural decomposition that you can do. You can take these two vertices. And you can take this other two vertices, one of them is at the infinity, and you can try to decom like, understand what this decomposition means geometrically. So there is a cubic structure, if you will, but it's not like Feynman diagrams. So these are the two things. And in my paper, I set up this whole formalism that how this can be further justified. So, you know, like I justify, you know, like you can consider adding punctures like having your own operators and then it's coming from level theory and you can use DOZZ, conform blocks, et cetera. So it can be done. So after you do that, what you find is the following thing that you can write uh, the following uh, bootstrap equation for double differentials. Square over two, Let's say that you want to compute S4 psi and I set all alpha i's to one. So I'm not going to denote it. And you consider semi-classical limit, WKB limit, and what you find is zero to infinity, the alpha exponential is Q square lambda square over two, is zero three star. Yeah, it's kind of long, but it's what it is. Two is zero three star, Q 
plus uh, two two square lambda square real part of the f alpha square one 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 psi. So what is these small f i's? They are just called classical conformal blocks. So if you just take your usual conformal blocks like this. And you consider it's semi-classical and WKB limit. It basically exponentiates as follows. This uh, limit exists, and these are the FIs: F two square, four square, F one square, psi. Okay, I'm running out of space, but I think you got the idea. So this this has been proven. You know, this limit exists, um, and basically you can use it to write this equation. And in fact, you are talking about settle point. So this integral is going to be dominated by the, 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 the settle point itself. So we are talking about conformal, like semi-classical limit. So this integral is supposed to be like a, there is a real defined value for alpha that has to run in this middle term. So it's actually, everything is uh, encoded in the, the, the settle point. So for example, length of the geodesic, first of all, settle point is defined as follows. You take this whole thing, copy, paste, and this thing, well, let me write like this, all together. So this thing equals to zero when alpha is equals to alpha uh, settle, say. So this is the settle point uh, of this equation. And uh, oh, before I do that, this fi you can write it as an expansion in like like you do the virus or block, and there's a recursion relation you can write. So you know, like this once you compute this is going to be some expansion, but in principle it's possible. And these there are exact formulas for this, like I said. So there is going to be settle point, and that settle point is actually the, the two pi alpha s is going to give you the, the, the non-contractible geodesic of the struggle geometry. It is, you know, like the ones that is surrounding two punctures. You again, you can justify it by this operator formalism, and then you can go ahead and um, I'm not going to write it, but you can go ahead and uh, evaluate SO four by plugging in this alpha alpha s. That's going to evaluate your four tachyon interaction. Uh, amazing thing is that, like I said, this. This is like uh, basically integrant for the, uh, you know, at least exponential exponentiation of this uh, tachyon integrant. And you computed it by just like a cubic information plus mirror server blocks. So, in a sense, it's quite amazing how it comes from. And the accessory parameter is that you can show either taking derivative of this directly or like doing some other algebra. It is going to give him by the, the, the um, derivative of the classical conformal block at the settle point. You take the derivative of it first, then plug in the settle point. So in a sense, alpha, you must know alpha s, basically you also know everything. Okay, so there are more things. For example, do you want the mapping radii for these uh, struggle differential because you know the, the it by itself it doesn't deter the it doesn't determine directly because this there was this d v square over v square and the d I'm sorry d w square over w square and the over scale of w drops out in this equation, but still you can compute it by you just take the derivative of this now with the alpha j. Then you say that the, the you know basically taking derivative of this modulus with respect to external weights and then set it to one. And you can show that this is equals to the, the mapping radii. So you can also compute that very easily. Now this alpha j equals just two low j. And okay, these are the local coordinates, but you can also describe the, the vertex region. So what you know like the, the justification is not you know like there is a like a modification that I also like a constant Considering a flat cylinder, it comes from there, but I'm not going to go into there. So basically, you consider this da one 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 psi, 
And vertex region in the uh, hyperbolic vertices is determined when the, the systole becomes uh, the, the equal to the length of the, the boundary, right? In Strebel differential is simple, like the, 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 the geodesic that is surrounding the punctures are like two pi. And what you have to do is that the, the once the, like, uh, the, the middle geodesic becomes two pi, that determines the vertex region. And what you find is this one. So, you know, this, this is a very funny constant, but it appears. Um, I, I don't know if it is surprising or not, but it does appear. And the, the left-hand side is just a classical conformal box. That, that, that you know, this, this, this is very explicit, right? That everything that here is determined by Burrusser algebra. So, any questions before I show the evidence that this formalism seem to be giving the correct answers? Okay. So first of all, the results are consistent with the numerical solutions, either uh, this old paper by Nicholas Muller or with our paper with Harold Irving. So for example, the vertex region is amazing because, so this, the dashed line is that the one that you get from this curve, like it, it has a expression. And the red one is that the ones you get from the numerical solution. So it's just matches on the, on the nose. And further, I also did the, like how the, the, the Schwinger parameter of the Feynman region depends on the moduli. You can also solve for it. And here's the, the overall dependence. So it kind of makes sense. There are additional numerical checks, you know, you can go ahead and look at it, all these things. And the differences are like order 10 to the minus four, which is like uh, the order that we used in this paper with Harold. And uh, the, the second check is that there is a crossing equation, right? When we talk about bootstrap, that's a chemical thing to do. And the crossing equation is basically once you decompose this channel, or versus this channel shall give you the same answers. And it does give you the same answers because, you know, like it's, yeah, <laughs> what else it's going to do? And we checked, uh, I checked it numerically, so it's fine. So, okay, uh, basically these are all uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, let me do some, um, like, uh, what's next about this? Uh, what, or like, what, what can we do about that? About, about like a clustering filter. So there are like obvious generalizations that that one has to consider. So for example. Uh, can I ask a question? Sorry, before you uh, talk about. Yeah. So is there a geometric meaning to this crossing equation from the language of the Strabel differentials? Uh, is there a, I mean, what does it really mean in, in um, uh, let, let me think for a second like the obvious answer is the following so once you have a, some once you set the moduli there is a unique travel differential right yeah so uh it tells you that uh, well at the base level you should find a single answer and basically the crossing equation is like it's telling you that the, whatever answer you find you'll find that answer i mean that uh, I think that's the underlying geometrical reason, but beyond that, I am not. Uh, no, I, I meant, of course, the final answer will be, of course, crossing symmetric, but uh, this is some kind of decomposition uh, that you are making. Is there a meaning to that decomposition? Uh, uh, like uh, the, these graphs, that, I mean, these pictures that you have drawn here, uh, I just wanted to understand is there, I mean, are they just pictures or is there a, uh, is, what is the sort of a meaning of these pictures? Yeah. Uh, the mean, meaning is as follows. So remember the cross in crossing, I basically write the following thing, right? I have S4, S04, basically the four punctures travels data. Mm -hmm. And I basically write a bootstrap equation that I have an S03, two S03s, right? Yes. And there is a conformal block. So this decomposition tells you that this astro S0 trees, like once you decompose the critical graph, is about like a red side and blue side. For example, this is a red side and blue side. 
-hmm. And uh, then you need to like adjust it by having this conformal blocks so that it describes the, the four the four punctures treble the French. So mm -hmm. in that aspect, yeah, I mean this this is kind of like a so because you see the this like a cubic thing that I draw is not a treble differential, right? Mm. That you cannot write it as a treble differential because there is like this bending going on, right? It it can't bend in the treble differential, so like like here, you know. So, uh, well, okay, you can ask what is the object that can describe this curve then? Well, I don't know that, so that's my answer. Mm. But even if I don't know that, like I can basically say, oh say that there's a like a length alpha s for this and uh, the other side no you know like the, these are two pi say then i can just treat them as a like a treble differential and these are going to get give me the correction so that the like these gets like bended in a sense hmm. so i mean so this, this is my basic level explanation i i really don't understand geometrically what this means because you see like in like there were some works uh, like a few years ago that people use a uh, conformal bootstrap to solve for uh, the laplacian on hyperbolic surfaces as well. And it also works very amazing. Like you compute, you take the Bolza surface, like a genus two surface with the special point. Yes. Yeah. And then they computed the smallest non-zero eigenvalue just using Virasor algebra. And right. they get a very amazing precision. Yeah. So like some, Somehow, like this type of virus or uh, cross hyperbolic things work. And uh, as I said, treble differential is a particular limit of the this type of hyperbolic constructions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, th there might be a deep story. And yeah, I, I will speculate just now about that actually. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other questions before I um, summarize? Okay. So, what's next? Um, well, first of all, I, I do some work about like hyperbolic string vertices related to Strabble. I consider uh, like I made some right the like a relations for their geometry and it like this tachyon uh, integrant describing string vertices. And then I constructed those uh, tachyon interaction just using the qubit data at the court level. So Generalizations are obvious, you know, you can just go and do the all the Riemann surfaces. So for example, you can do one puncture torus, which is a work in progress. I don't know when it's going to finish, but hopefully soon. So then once you do it, then, you know, like maybe you want to try two puncture torus so that you can do mass renormalizations, you know, from first principles. Um, so the, the thing about one puncture torus is that you know the blocks. Right, so it, it should be like it's very similar. So other even surfaces is that different story because, I mean, we don't know classical conformal blocks, and there are some works by Sheehan and company that they have recursion for uh, uh, this blocks themselves, but it's not very amenable to this type of computations as far as I can see. And uh, usually when bootstrap people talk about it, they can like cross, okay, you want to satisfy crossing at the four puncture level, of course it's going to satisfy in other levels. So they don't really construct these explicitly, but the, for local coordinates, you if you want to solve it explicitly, you have to construct them explicitly. So probably that's not a right way to approach it, I will say. Uh, what I want to, what I will rather want to do is that the, like somehow that they are like the systematic procedure should let out to certain like, simplification without competing the local coordinates. That will be ideal. I don't know how, but that will be ideal. So there is either other, of course, the obvious generalization, the open closed vertices, uh, hyperbolic open closed vertices that can be done. What you have to do is consider level theory on this upper off plane with probably F, Z, Z, T boundary conditions. And then you can say, okay, I can do SUSY maybe like super symmetric level theory somehow also does the same thing and relate the PCOs. I, I mean, I haven't considered this, but like, let me put it as a question because it might be interesting to do. Uh, teacher chaining operators. Um, so the second thing is that, that, that is kind of bothering me is that uh, again, my goal is like, uh, hopefully construct these solutions eventually. 
And at some point you have to deal with this modular integration. So, so far what I said doesn't do anything about that. Like, I don't know how to do this beyond numerical, of course, uh, how to do this modular integration. So like there are a few ideas that I consider, like for example, you can say maybe topological recursion of this Aynard Orientin or like triple S type of things, recursion. Well, that will be hard because tachyon potential doesn't depend on the length only, it depends on twist as well. So it doesn't, uh, it's not going to work exactly. The other thing is that the, the axillary fields Okay, I don't know how to write auxiliary fields, auxiliary string fields. That is basically going to make this decomposition manifest somehow. That might be an option. Um, so there are maybe other possibilities. And the last point that I want to uh, understand is that uh, this unreasonable effectiveness of level theory in post-string field theory. So. I don't understand why this happens. I mean, you can, so there might be like multiple reasons that, actually, let me show you a picture. You can just say, well, this is just a hyperbolic geometry. Of course, the legal theory is going to make an appearance, but that's a surface level answer. But then you can say, okay, maybe legal theory is like a central to conform uh, the, the post string field theory because, you know, legal theory is in certain sense the background independent thing. So, Maybe it's not that surprising that it appears in the parameterization as well. Maybe you can make it dynamical so that you don't need vertices or something, you know, something like that might happen. Yeah, it will be ideal if it happens, but I don't know uh, yet if you can if you can do that. But yeah, like this is all I'm going to say. So thank you very much for listening. And yeah, I can take more questions. Thirteen. Thanks, Atakan, for a nice talk. Um, so, are there any questions? So, this uh, integral over modulized space. Um, uh, is so, um, yeah, I mean, you had a, at least for the tachyon case, you had somewhat natural. Uh, interpretation for, uh, I mean, the integrand was a fairly natural uh, geometrical object. And uh, uh, is there a chance you think uh, that it could be related to some natural characteristic classes on moduli space? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, that's that's essentially the the, uh, what I'm thinking right now. I mean, there are two aspects of this problem. The first aspect is that the following. So we are not integrating over the old moduli space. Yes. So that's that's the difference between the usual string theory and string field theory. We have certain restriction to the vertex region. So first of all, once that enters, that characters classes and topological recursion becomes really hard. Like there's no natural, like you cannot put into the universal code, for example. That's that basically the, the, the procedure is ill-defined. So that's one problem that is, I was mentioning mostly. The second problem is that, uh, of course, integrant in the, the tachyon, potent, tachyon is for very natural, but the higher mass level is also quite natural. It's all about the local coordinates and how it relates. So it's also like a max, there are quantities that probably that maximizes, but certain, not just mapping radius, but also how it connects gets maximized. Like with like a certain length condition, for example. So, well, in those cases, even though like it can get related to the characteristic classes, the first problem persists. Like I, I only want to integrate far from degeneration. So that 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 is like that is a very unconventional problem from the perspective of Riemann surfaces. Yeah, no, it's true that you've sort of chopped up the modular space in some way, and uh, but maybe, I mean, uh, the you know from this BV master equation that the whole thing should fit together. Okay, there's uh, the Feynman region, and uh, 
Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So maybe I see what you mean. Up, uh, or put it all together in some way. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. That that might be certainly a possibility. You know, like when, for example, like when I when I should ask like this effective tech young potential. For, yeah, that that will be the for example that like, is going to get integrated over all modules space in, in a certain way because you're going to chop up then you consider a Feynman vertex contribution plus Feynman one and also you're going to subtract off the appropriate tachyon uh, exchange so that you compute the effective uh, tachyon potential basically integrating out all massive level yeah indeed that's going to be uh, integral over the whole moduli space but again there is this like a discontinuity that is separating vertex from Feynman regions that is uh, yeah that is also unnatural in my like in my understanding because there is a discontinuity right like this it like there is it's continuous uh, but its first derivative is gets uh uh like it basically it gets a king over the word the boundary of the vertex region so but anyway like it might be possible to relate that to certain characteristic class over the uh, the moduli space for example the, the one thing that i really want to understand is that that number that you comp compute for the effective tachyon potential only depends on like a topology, right? That's a, there's a dependent on puncture genus and nothing else in effective tachyon potential. So then there should be a certain matrix model that generates that number as like a, you know, as a generating function. So for example, that type, like if, if one approach that problem like that, maybe that, that might be more uh, fruitful. Because there is one matrix model that will do that, but we don't know which one or what is. Uh, so uh, the last thing that you said you had in mind uh, just over the vertex regions? Uh, no, it's over the whole model. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, basically, the idea is that uh, you want to compute the effect of tachyon interaction, say T, like this. So there is, a, of course, the usual tachyon interacting like as a quartic vertex. Then you consider like a Feynman diagrams like this, the all massive states, but then you subtract off the tachyon in the middle. So effective that's integrate out the massive fields, right? So for this quantity right there, that what you com that compute uh, in the tachyon potential, effective tachyon potential was T square plus T cube. So there's going to be some number T to the four. So this number, only depends on uh, topology, like a number of punctures. So if you if your goal is to compute that quantity, maybe doing this type of like a integrating over whole moduli and like matrix model, that sort of thing may be more amenable to co computations rather than the pure tachyon potential. So yes. that's that's what I tried to say. No, there's three. Any other questions? Are there any more questions? Yeah, if not, uh, let's thank Ken for the nice talk again. So yeah, see you soon. See you soon, soon sometime. Yep. Uh, thank you for the clear talk. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I, I, you know, like let me know if you have any more comments because you know there are lots of things that are not clear in this story, and I want to make it clear. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay.